Walker Kessler has been one of the biggest bright spots for this Utah Jazz roster in recent memory, and he's been seen as a really big cornerstone piece of their rebuild. Now, it's very interesting that he ended up being the next man up after the trade went out with Rudy Gobert, who presents himself as a very similar prospect with defensive upside, the likes of which very few centers can compete with, and also a sense of an offensive upside that even Rudy Gobert didn't present. With that being said, we're going to be covering that today in this video. Thanks for tuning in this video. It's your boy, Ray Hoops. Make sure to like the video, subscribe, and turn on post notifications to pump this video out towards more Utah jazz lovers like you and myself. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into this one. Now, the biggest thing to look at for Walker Kessler is the question mark that comes down to what role he's playing on the roster this year. At the beginning of the season, it seemed like he was going into a sophomore season slump, but then it came out that he actually sustained an elbow injury against the Sacramento Kings in the regular season opener. Now, overall, he ended up in a position where he was starting, but ended up getting switched down to the bench and plays roughly 20 to 24 minutes on a nightly basis while being swapped in and out for John Collins. It's surprising that they elected to do that, and in many situations, a lot of people question why they would even be willing to do that, considering the fact that Obviously, Walker Kessler is a superior defender, but the ability of John Collins to shoot the three ball very effectively allows him to stretch the floor and put a lot of strain on opposing defenses in starting lineups. Meanwhile, Walker Kessler's role on defense and his ability to protect the rim at an elite level, the likes of which we've only ever seen with Rudy Gobert in the league, allows for him to play alongside the likes of Keontae George, Jordan Clarkson, and Kelly Olynyk who aren't known to be the most elite of defenders, but have a lot more offensive upside than Walker Kessler tends to show. With that being said, Ochai Abaji also runs off the bench alongside Walker Kessler, which allows him to have a little bit of help on the wing. But in most situations, you'll see the likes of Keontae George or Jordan Clarkson funneling their man downhill at the rim, in which case they are met by Walker Kessler, who ends up forcing a near 15% reduction in shot attempt efficiency at the rim, only beat by Rudy Gobert, who's putting on his very own case for Defensive Player of the Year this season. In order to understand just how decent this season has been for Walker Kessel, we need to look back at last season. With that being said, he played in 74 games and started in 40 of them. Eventually, most of his starts came after they shut down the Stars and ended up just going ahead and seeing what they had on the roster to fill things out as they went into a full tank mode but we really got to see what he was capable of. Now he played 23 minutes in those matches. He averaged 9.2 points, 8.4 rebounds, 0.9 assists, 0.4 steals, 2.3 blocks, and only 0.8 turnovers per game. This was done on 72% shooting from the field and roughly 51.6% shooting from the free throw line on only 2.1 attempts per game. This was a very solid rookie season for him, more so because he showed what they really needed on defense. They needed a stifling presence in the paint that could provide elite rim protection and also provide a good rim runner that could also be used in many pick and roll situations and finish with contact above the rim. This season to date, he's played in most games with the exception of the few that he's missed with injury. And overall, he's played 34 games, starting in 13 of them, which came at the very beginning of the season. Ever since they elected to go ahead and break away the duo of Collins and Walker Kessler at that power forward and center spot, they found themselves in a situation where the starting five is actually outscoring opponents by 0.7 points per 100 possessions. And surprisingly enough, the second unit led by Walker Kessler on defense is actually outscoring opposing teams by 24 points per 100 possessions, which is quite honestly phenomenal. Now with that in mind, he's playing 23.7 minutes per game, averaging 8.6 points, 7.6 rebounds, 0.7 assists, 0.5 steals, and 2.6 blocks to go along with only one turnover per game. This season, he shoots 64.9% from the field, 25% from three, and 48.9% from the free throw line on only 1.4 attempts a game. Now, the most ideal thing for Walker Kessler going forward is going to be him finding his shooting touch. We've seen him change his jumper over the offseason from more of a catapult motion outwards towards one that requires much more of a wrist flick and seems a little bit more natural for a shorter player to use. He is also a beneficiary of playing alongside Kelly Olynyk and Larry Markkinen that are two of the best perimeter shooters at their respective heights. With that being said, it's important that he learns that skill sooner rather than later because that will allow them to offensively spread out a lot more with him on the court than they do currently. 
That's one of the main reasons why John Collins has been able to be a starter for the team because he allows for that extra spacing that Walker Kessler simply does not at this point in his career. With that being said, Walker Kessler has still been willing to shoot some threes every now and then. And while this season he only averages 0.5 attempts per game, that's significantly higher than these zero attempts that he averaged last season. Now, the big thing about Walker Kessler, aside from his three-point shooting and his overall shooting from the field, is going to be his ability to hit free throws. While he doesn't get very many of them because of his particular play style and the way that they initiate the usage of him in the offense, it's still important that he finishes at the rim through contact and makes the most of the opportunities at the charity stripe that the referees warrant him to be deserving of. Now to put things into perspective, he's been pretty effective as a starter and as a bench member, but more so known for his overall bench authority. With that being said, he started in 13 games so far this season before moving to the bench. In those 26 minutes per game, he averaged 9.2 points, 8.3 rebounds, 0.7 assists, 0.5 steals, a whopping 2.8 blocks, and only 1.2 turnovers per game. Now, he did this while shooting 60.9% from the field, 33% from three, and 58.8% from the free throw line on 1.3 attempts. So far off the bench this season, he's actually played in 21 games, where he's averaging 22.2 minutes per game, and in that time period, he's averaging 8.3 points, 7.1 rebounds, 0.8 assists, 0.5 steals, 2.5 blocks, and 0.9 turnovers per game. To go along with shooting splits of 67.8% from the field, 14.3% from the three-point line, and 43.3% from the free throw line on 1.4 attempts. Overall, it would seem like his shooting numbers take the biggest hit with him coming off of the bench. But the most interesting thing is the simple fact that he's completely been able to turn around his box score plus minus by coming off of the bench and assisting those guys that have a scoring punch and weak defense with a strong finisher at the rim and elite rim protection to help make their lives easier on that side of the floor. With that being said, he went from in his starts being a total of a negative 42 box score plus minus to a plus 68 in the 21 games he's come off the bench. With that being said, the most important aspect to Walker Kessler's game, the simple fact of the potential that he has to get better on the offensive side of the ball. At worst, everybody projects him to be Rudy Gobert. At best, they see him as being some sort of a demigod that provides that same level of elite rim protection and honestly a much smoother mover on the perimeter that can, in certain situations, keep up with smaller guards and even smaller forwards that are, tend to be quite quick, as well as having the offensive upside that Rudy Gobert quite simply never had and hasn't seemed to develop at any point in his career. With that being said, Walker Kessler is already a solid finisher at the rim. He has the ability to dunk. He has soft touch enough to get a floater off, but he's expanding his game so that he can hit more mid-range jumpers, and we've seen him roam a lot more outside the three-point line. Now, the percentages earlier that I said didn't seem to be the most entertaining naturally, but the simple fact of the matter is Walker Kessler is currently willing to shoot threes a little bit more than he was at any other point. With that being said, the next step that Walker Kessler needs to take with his offensive game is hitting his free throws and being willing to take even more threes from outside the three-point line. Not so much so that he becomes a detriment and ends up shutting down the offensive possessions by him jacking threes, but more so being willing to take one to two threes on a nightly basis so that he can get up a quality sample size. And he doesn't necessarily need to even shoot 36, 37% from three. Realistically, if he can shoot 33 or 34%, that makes him enough of a viable threat to where bigs can't simply sink under his screens every time he picks and pops. That also provides a larger array of possibilities when it comes to Chris Dunn as your starting point guard or off the bench when he has Keontae George and Jordan Clarkson as his primary guards. Whatever the case may be, it's clear that the Utah Jazz need Walker Kessler in their future. And despite the fact that he's having a rather up and down season that has seen him finally come alive off the bench, a lot of people will really look at that and say, oh, he's not starting games, so he must not be playing well. When it's quite the opposite, actually. He's playing so well, they found a role with him off of the bench to where he can affect the game so dramatically in only 20 to 24 minutes that it's quite honestly uncanny and in some ways never seen before. With that being said, I believe that while they're exploiting matchups and allowing John Collins to start at the five, there's going to be some games where Walker Kessler does see another start simply because it allows them to do more things defensively and set the tone early on. 
But until that happens, we're going to see a lot of Walker Kessler coming off of the bench, which is completely fine because he's doing his job to the best of his ability when he's put in that position to help the Utah Jazz win games. With that being said, you guys let me know what you think about Walker Kessler coming off the bench and let me know if he is in a sophomore slump this year or if you think he's roughly at the same page and he needs to take that next step forward. As always, thanks for tuning in this video. It's your boy Wraith Hoops. Make sure to like the video, comment your thoughts below, subscribe and turn on post notifications and become a member to catch the videos faster than everybody else and support the channel. With that being said, shout out to Sachin for this video. And as always, good morning, good evening, good night. No matter where you're on the globe watching, thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.